the ship is tilting right down towards the water. Baby carriages careering hither and thither, people losing their footing, struggling to hold on to anything to keep themselves upright. George Hook realised what was happening. He could see that with his ship tilting, heavy lifeboats were swinging in right over the deck and people were getting mashed as they tried to push those lifeboats out so they could be launched. He can see lifeboats landing on top of each other, lifeboats flipping and tipping everybody into the water and then landing on top of people. He can see them being dragged underwater. It's not a good prospect to try and save his family. So he said to his son and daughter, we're not going to get into a lifeboat, it's too dangerous. He lined his family up at the rail. He said to his son and his daughter, we're going to jump. Sixteen minutes since the impact. The deck where the Hook family clings to the railing is almost in the water. Elsie stood at the rail, looked at the water, and prayed, please, God, save me, please. Once she had finished her prayer, she heard two women behind her crying, and she turned around and said, don't worry, ladies, God will save you. The water reaches their feet. It's now or never. George tells his children to jump. Frank was ripped away from his father and his sister, and they lost him. At 2.28, just 18 minutes after she was struck, the Lusitania disappears beneath the waves. For many, 228 is the last minute of their lives. For others stranded in the freezing waters of the Atlantic, the horror is only beginning. Word of the Lusitania's sinking reached land almost immediately. But two hours later, the rescue boats have yet to arrive. Nobody necessarily wanted to close the Lusitania that quickly with a U-boat with torpedoes around. Do you want to sink as well? Of course you don't. Getting sunk and more people in the water is not going to help anyone. Ireland is just 12 miles away, agonizingly close, but too far to swim. Hundreds of passengers and crew are at the mercy of the freezing conditions. Only six of 44 lifeboats were successfully launched. In one of them, George and Elsie Hook desperately scan the water for young Frank. The rescue boats did finally arrive, three hours after the sinking. By the following morning, more than 700 people have been saved. But the dead will wash up on the shores around Queenstown for weeks to come. So many bodies were brought ashore that they're described as being stacked up on the quayside like cordwood. Sailors carried the bodies of the dead children ashore in their arms as carefully as if those children had still been living and laid them by the sides of the adults on the quayside. George and Elsie Hook spend three grueling days trying to find Frank's body. Elsie and her father had to go from mortuary to mortuary, inspecting the lines of bodies lying there under white sheets, rows and rows of them, pulling back the sheet each time, inspecting the face underneath, wondering whether they'd see Frank there or not. Then a man came up to George Hook and said, I've heard about a boy who's in hospital outside of Queenstown. Have you looked at him to see if he's Frank? The boy they find has a broken leg caused by a falling lifeboat. Apart from that, young Frank Hook is completely unharmed. And the first words out of Frank's mouth when he saw his father were, gee, Dad, it took you long enough to get here. 